Glória a Deus. Eu gostaria de abrir a Bíblia com a palavra do Senhor. Vamos abrir a nossa Bíblia. Eu gostaria de abrir a Bíblia com a palavra do Senhor. Matthew 21, verse 6. You guys are going to get tired of hearing Matthew. I'm not at fault. Matthew 21, verse 6, and so on states. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their cloth on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude says, said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus, then Jesus went to the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold those. And he said to them, It, it is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children cried out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what they, these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouth of the babies and nursing infants you have a perfect praise? The church may be seated. Brothers and sisters, we are talking a lot these days about one of the last actions of Jesus in this earth and it's connected to one of the less actions of the church in this chapter 21st we are going to see the last time that Jesus entered in Jerusalem he already went in before many other times But what do you mean? Well, he always fulfilled the, the laws. Ever since he was little, from Jesus' parents, always attended to all the uh, invitations and the, fe the feasts, and went to the temple many times. But Jesus, many times, he went in Jerusalem. But this time was completely different. Because this last entrance of Jesus, he was fulfilling the prophecy ever since in Zechariah, in the prophets which stated that the Messiah would enter in Jerusalem. And so that's why I said this entrance was the one that fulfilled the prophecy. And here it gives a start to the last week of Jesus in, the, in, in, in earth. Saturday he was in Bethany. Bethany. He was participating. He was in the house of uh, Lazarus. Martha, Maria, all the feasts that they had going on. And the next Sunday, next day, Sunday, he went to Jerusalem. And now since he enters Jerusalem in accordance with the prophecy, a mounting on a donkey and a coat, giving all 
that presentation of humbleness, of peace. Jesus now he's received something that never had, had happened before. Jesus now prepared the disciples. He, he, a huge multitude came to see Jesus. And when Jesus started going, I mean, heading towards Jerusalem, the people who were there to see the Messiah, not Christ. Because there's a big difference between the Messiah, the, mes the word Messi Messiah, it's in Hebrew, and Christ is, is written in Greek because Christ in Israel, they await for the Messiah, the one who came to save the people, the one who came to free the people from the Romans. But to the church, Christ was coming, the one blessed by God. So there are two different forms so men could look at Jesus. In Israel, the, the people who knew about the prophecies and, the, uh, and in, Israel, in Israel, that's how they look at Jesus. Many times people come, in, come to the church expecting to see Jesus to solve his problem physically. The problem from, for this life that's going to give a freedom. It's going to give him a pro prosper, a cure. Many are like that, awaiting Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, but the one who's going to save man so he can continually have con um, life on this planet. But to the faithful church, they look at Jesus and, and, and hope for eternity. They await for Christ, the one blessed by God, the one who's going to give us the, the connection straight forward to heaven, to the Father. It's gonna, that, the one that's going to bring us something that we await the most, which is the fulfilled soul, the, the, the soul fulfilled of the Holy Spirit, fulfilled of the presence of God, fulfilled of happiness. A soul that's not worried about the things of this life. That's not priority. So when people heard that the Messiah was coming, even he said himself, go and tell them that the Messiah is coming. And so all the disciples went there and made a propaganda. They started expanding the word, stating that Jesus, he would open the doors for the multitude. And so until then, he was always there. People were following him. He was deviating sometimes. But now he had to go there and face it because the prophecy had to be fulfilled. So Jesus, he went towards Jerusalem. People were cutting trees, cutting the, the, <coughs> the leaves and putting throughout the, way, the path so Jesus could, could pass in there. People were taking their clothes and putting on the floor, just like an artist. They were putting leaves on the floor so that he may not touch the floor, like a, a huge reception, like Hollywood style, something that was of high quality. People were expecting his presence so highly that they were giving their best and so Jesus started with was the reality and the reason why he came in the first place <coughs> people were, at, were asking who are you which man is that who is him and the city were shaking they were anxious and they said this is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee Galilea, and the first thing that Jesus did was going straight forward to the temple. And on the temple, Jesus went there and he started to put everything in order. People were thinking that he was going to meet Pilatus or get satisfaction with the Roman emperor. 
but no, he went straight forward to the temple. And so Jesus um, start to show <coughs> the, the reason why the temple exists in the first place, the meaning of the temple. The, the Passover was going to start on Friday, the day that Jesus died. That's why Jesus is considered as the, the Passover lamb because he literally died on the Passover. The, the law stated that every Jew had to go in the Passover in Jerusalem. And they, they had to bring an animal, a lamb, without any defects, when he, without any problems, nothing broken. He had to be well chosen. How many days did they have to cho choose the, uh, the lamb? Who remembers? One year before? Way less than that. In Exodus 12, state that in the, the, the tenth day of the month, you're going to choose a male lamb of one year old. He had to be one year old. You got close enough. <laughs> he had to be one year old. Four days before, he had to grab the animal, bring inside his house. Because in the, in the 14th day, the Passover was going to happen. So they had to live with the lamb for four days within their house, inside their house. They had to go out there, choose between the flock, the most perfect lamb, bring it inside their house and stay literally with them, with with the, the chosen lamb for four days. So the lamb, he He changes from being someone strange and becomes part of the family with the moment that he lives there for four days. That's what Jesus needs to be for us. He cannot be a stranger. He has to be someone that we have intimacy. He has to be someone that we have within our lives, with, with inside of, how, of, of our house. The kids has to play with him and do what we usually do when we have intimacy the things that we usually do we need to have contact our children they need to learn how to recognize the lamb how to grab on his tail push and play around with it our children they need to have that, that experience and those things the, 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 the parents they have to teach they have to do it and how do you do that you have to pray teach him how to pray Teach him how to read the word. Teach him how to seek the presence of God. How to consult the word of God. Teach him. Like, oh Lord, I need something. I mean, oh, um, Dad, I need something. And the father goes like, let's consult the Lord. Let's see what the, what the Lord says. Oh, there's going to be a feast from a, 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 a friend of school. Teach him how to consult the word of God. Do you want to go? If the if the Lord say that you can go, then go. But first consult the Lord. Seek Him first. If God says no, <laughs> it's not. Then we need to have that intimacy with the Lamb for four, what one song? Follow Papa. Why did Jesus went to the temple and put everybody to run? Because people were not doing what they were supposed to do according to the law. People just want to go there in the day of the sacrifice and buy the lamb and say, Oh, here, high priest, here's my offer. You know, one thing that happened a lot as well, the corruption within inside of the leaders the father they had to choose the lamb he had to choose the lamb, lamb. With, without anything broken it had to be perfect 
Quando eles chegavam lá, when he na, na, pra, pra o cordeiro, would go there and offer the lamp near where the high priest sat. Quem é que espiava o bichinho? Who was the quem é que, one? Quem é que autorizava? Who autorized to say, is he, is he good or he's bad? Aí você o bichinho, so we would grab a lamp so perfectly and this, the high priest would say, not this one. This one is not approved. How so? Well, I had chosen, wow, no, this one is not approved. So what do I do? There's this one. Do not tell anybody. But there's one that they're selling. Go in there, buy it, and bring it over here. That's what they would do. <coughs> Could you imagine that they would do such things? It was more expensive, for sure. And also, the type of money they would use was Sunday. Pastor Sapo talked about it. It was a Roman. One of them were Romans. But in the temple, they wouldn't accept Roman. Nothing from Roman. They had a fight with Roman. You want to buy something? Oh, it's so expensive. Well, I have to obey the law. Don't you want to receive the forgiveness from your sin? Go in there and buy it. But and then he would give him the money. What circulated was the Roman money, but back then they didn't accept it. So you had to change from the Roman money to the temple, <coughs> which was four times more expensive. Could you imagine in Brazil, you have real, that's what they use the money in there, and in here we only have dollar, and it's like four real to one dollar. <coughs> so you had to go there and, and buy dollars to pay in dollars. That's something extremely crazy. They would constantly do that. That's why Jesus, when he went there, <coughs> He put everybody to run because because they weren't obeying the law and also Jesus was trying to implement what was spiritually because they were all corrupted. The words state that Jesus would go there in the temple. And he would kick all of them out. Every negotiable ways that he could do in the temple, Jesus literally put all those things out. And he said, in my house, it would be called the house of prayer. But you all have converted to thieves. Today we have to understand that what is spiritual, unfortunately, in many temples, it doesn't exist anymore. Because what people t today, what they want the most is the, the self-benefit, the easy way. They buy their blessing. They want to sell blessing. That's completely wrong. The temple of God or our life with God has to be in a, a spiritual ambience. That's why people get frustrated. Because they come to church with the intention, with a human intention, and they come here and nothing works. So they get upset about it. The same people that wanted the Messiah the Savior of Israel was the one who also said, crucify him, we want Baha Bahabas? And nothing got solved. One more. Today people, they go in the church <coughs> looking for those things. 
That's why when Jesus went to Jerusalem, he never went to Pilatus because the problem of Israel wasn't anything else but spiritually. And many people problems today is a spiritual problem. It's only spiritual. Because when man, he look at Jesus and he awaits from Jesus something for, for eternal life, he can reach because God opened the doors. He gives miracles. After the religion went away and everything that went away and was clean, pe people started going in, into the temple. Those who were sick, who couldn't walk, who couldn't see, the blind ones, the ones who couldn't hear, they went there. Why? Because they needed a, mir a miracle. And in the temple, there only should be the one who needs a miracle. <coughs> the one who wants a miracle, the blessing from God, not the blessing for this life. But they had to walk in the path of Jesus to see the glory of God that it was within Jesus. So the men, we need to have that. The situation today is the same. So after everybody left, they literally ran. Even the high priest, nobody put him to run because when Jesus comes in, where there's corruption, where there's the wrong, he literally put the right thing on. He take possession of what is truthful. And you will know the truth and the truth will free you. That's why, brothers and sisters, today our worriness is to have a place where the Holy Spirit is being poured out. We cannot at any time have something that is simply simply omitting um, stuff that we're doing by obligation or if I don't do it the high priest is going to go there in my family and do this and do that and I'll be looked in a bad and wrong way. No. The one who are serving God they need to do that with their open hearts with the disposal not for man but for God when you have your heart open to Jesus the Holy Spirit enters and he starts to operate he starts to transform he starts to ministry and transform and take away anything that is not for eternal life and he starts to operate within our hearts the church, I mean the children, and all the ones that went there that were sick, they were cured. The children were, they were pleading in the temple, Hosanna, son of David. They were, in, in, they were surprised because when man wants to take the benefit from something that is spiritual, he he gets upset when God starts to operate because there's a reason why there's there's a saying it's the blessing of the church man usually seeks only the benefit that's why it never ends and people get upset about it but when the Holy Spirit comes in and he goes in the nucleus in the center of the problem and the and the person accepts Jesus and she starts to, to, to live a, a transformed life. He starts to understand that what he needs is nothing for this life, but for eternity. And people get upset because when God stops to, uh, starts to operate, where there's a spiritual ambient, ambience in which the Holy Spirit flows throughout the church, God starts to operate. He operates here, there, in the back, in this side, and people start to feel the presence of God. The marvelous things that God can do, the miracles, ha starts to happen. And the children, they start to glorify God. And so the, <laughs> they said it. The perfect praise is the one that is accepted by God. It's the praise without interest, without looking at the benefit. Is is saying, God, I'm grateful for everything that you have done in my life. I glorify you, God, for the doors that you have opened. Because if if it doesn't open, it's all good. 
I'm going to glorify him anyways. That is the praise, the perfect love, the perfect praise, the, the, the humble praise to God. And at the same time, God operating throughout our lives, we need to have this within the church. We are here for that. We are here to be instruments in the hands of God. God called us to do His work. He counts with each and every one of us. But for that, we need to have sincerity. We need to have honesty and disposition and definition and know that this ambience is called house of prayer because in here is where we're going to pray to God. It's where we're going to put our, our knees down and it's in here in which we have to learn that only our knees down is the way for victory. And we need to seek Him sincerely and only with sincerity we're going to receive the blessing. That's why God called us today so that we may stay here with an open heart with the disposal within ourselves because that's the only way that miracles will happen that is the only way in which God will accept our prayers and all the chains that connects men to hell and lock him down and, 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 and prevent him to have contact with God will be free will be break down <coughs> There cannot be any existence of corruption in any matter because only in that way is the way that God will have a contact with man. Israel had a big issue with discerning what was spiritual because they knew the word, they knew the promise, but they didn't knew how to discern the moment that they lived. They couldn't do it. And many people do the same thing today. They, they still the same way. Because man will never be able to say, God, they stole my dresses. I'm here. I do not ha have any dress. I don't even know how I got here. There's no argument. There's no this way to to argue that. It, it is our mistake. If God is not operating throughout our lives, it's our mistake. It's not Roman. It's not Pilatus. It's not the soldiers of Roman. The mistake and the, the error was made by the spiritual leader for not discern the Christ, the Son of God. So that's why God always He always come and fix us when we have an issue, when we have a failure. He comes, He shows it. And He reveals Himself. And so we need to have the correction. That's why Jesus went straight to the temple because Israel had a huge failure. That's why today God is also showing that for us. Because us in this last moment, we cannot fail. Because we have the scriptures. We have the bad experiences. We have the good experiences. We have the bad examples and the good examples. But yet, today, we still have people that are in this, doing the same mistake over and over again. Not understanding the prophetic moment that we live. Isn't that right? The church of the last time. The salvation should be something extreme because the Bible shows everything. When, when people they come to the church, they hear what is the truth, something that is a shirt of the right thing, something with, without any mask, anything to, to fake in it. No, today the churches, they were supposed to be completely full. Why? Because we have everything to make it happen. But the people of God today, they have all the tools to make God happy. But unfortunately, what we see is the opposite. The leader, the leader is forgetting the spiritual, 
and hiding the spiritual and, and exposing the self-benefit. It's a big mistake. But the Lord has given us this opportunity. And the Holy Spirit talks straight to the man's heart. And He insists with man because the salvation is for all. And ever since the church was here and still here, the salvation is still available for all of us. But that's why we need to have a spiritual ambience, the house of prayer. In our prayer, it should be God give us an ambience, which is spiritual, an ambience in which the Holy Spirit has freedom to visit, to operate, to, to touch our hearts. So may God bless us. Bless Let's stand up. The Lord shows a couple of gifts and one of the gifts that we show the position of the church. The position of the faithful servant. And that position is to fight against the sin. And for that it's necessary that we have communion of the Holy Spirit, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. A man will only be victorious against sin when he is convinced by the Holy Spirit. Today, God showed a woman that is here today and she needed a lot of communion to support the investments, the persecutions, the accusations, but she won. She was 
twice because the the lamp was with her. It's a gift from God. When we have Jesus within our lives and we have intimacy with Him, we, sh we always have the operation of the Holy Spirit. When he begins to be a a intimacy and not a stranger, that's when we will have more communion with God. The Lord also show a woman with the heart that needs to be open, not for the world, but for Jesus. To have this position for what is for this world is not good. We need to have intimacy with eternity. Amen. The closer we get to God, the more victory we will have. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Glorify you. We thank you for your word that has been revealed, that came straight to our hearts. We glorify you, God, because it's good to serve you. Because we serve a God in which is marvelous, in which is the great I am. God, we glorify you for your love. We glorify you because we await for the day of your coming, God. We glorify you for your grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, receive our prayer giving us a blessing of understanding of your project help us God accept the word help us God uh, live your your word and so we may be free and that we might live a life of communion in which your spirit has freedom of conduct us the victory God victory in this world and victory also for eternity may we have the guarantee and assurance of eternal life bring us in peace the prayer we get in the name of Jesus and in your name we say then the grace of marvelous Jesus Christ the eternal father and now the sweet consolations and the gifts and the operation of the Holy Spirit may be poured all over us for now and ever. Amen. If anybody wants prayer, we dispose ourselves. Let's remember about the uh, seminar uh, and the 24th. We will have a special service at 8 30 a.m. We also should get prepared for this service. <laughs> The service with which we'll preach and will be trans transmitted to all the church and, and all those who does not know God. We greet all with the peace of the Lord. Uh.